Elhamdülillah. Elhamdülillahi lezî bi ni'amihi tatumus salihat. Elhamdülillahi lezî qaddara kulla ma huwa atin ve kulla ma huwa fat. Nes'aluhu azza ve celle mucibati rahmetih. Nes'aluhu el fawza bil cenne ve el necate minen nar. I bear witness there is no deity save Allah and that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger and his mercy to all mankind. We pray to him to shower his mercy and his blessings upon all the prophets and upon Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon all of them. Dear brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, my khutbah today will be about the obvious one Islam and the coronavirus. And I believe the previous speakers have addressed it. I hope today I will be adding some clarification that I feel is needed. But before I proceed, I just wanted to have a, a, a short intro that viruses, plagues, natural disasters have been with the human being from the dawn of time. Ever since there is a recorded history, we will find that we have been, as a human being, the homo sapien, have been experiencing these calamities, these challenges, these difficulties, these hardship. And there's no community has been immune from it. No region has been immune from it. And if you look at our history, you'll find the Muslim world had its share of it. Asia had its share of it. Europe had its share of it. It is just a human phenomena that God Almighty has chosen for, a wisdom beyond us has chosen for us to experience. So this is something sometimes when I hear some of these remarks by the so-called scholars, it, it I feel like it escapes, their, it escapes them to realize that this is something that has happened and will keep on happening. And by the way, when you look at history and you read history, you'll find the impact of these, whether it's natural disasters or viruses, on the society was significant and great, impacted economy and politics and the society and every aspect of the every aspect of our existence. So I, I just wanted to share with you and to remind us of this has always been there and will always be. The second thing I want to talk about when, when I, I can't help it but not to listen and to uh, observe what people are saying. And people of faith, I don't mean just the Muslims. People of faith you know, uh, you have Christians, you have Jews, you have Hindus, you have Buddhists. Everybody is talking. This is something that has impacted the world. So every uh, 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 faith and every group of people are trying to weigh in on this matter. And for, this, for the sake of sim simplification, I would like to summarize. They are based on my observation and, and, and for the sake of simplicity. I find there are two groups of people. There's one group of people who they are speaking that God is punishing the non-believers. God, others are saying is, well, God is punishing the sinners of the believers. Others are saying is, well, God actually is purifying the believers. He loves us and he wants to purify us. And the list can go on. And when you really look into what the spacing, and by the way, this is it, it has consumed a lot of airwaves and a lot of time. When you really study and dissect and analyze what they're saying, you will find them moving into a space that does not belong to us. It belongs to the creator who has created all these things. Because the moment you go into that and you start judging and you start 
casting that God is punishing this or God is punishing that, punishing this country, punishing that country. You have to give reasons. And no one would know but the creator what is the purpose that God has chosen coronavirus to start from a certain region. What is the wisdom? Why it is this timing, for example? What are the goals? Right? So there's a list of questions that we cannot answer it. This is out of our hand. We ought to be humble and we need to realize this is out of our hand and this belongs to the creator. So this group, I find them to be consumed why the virus is, is here now, why it is the timing, and who is the virus is targeting. And all of them, it is out of their hand. So I believe it is honestly squandering an, uh, an, an opportunity, squandering uh, uh, the, 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 the role. What is the role which I'll come to in the second group of people? So that is the first group of people that unfortunately you hear a lot uh, people from that group talking on TVs or on uh, social media and so on and so forth. This, however, there is a second group of people. And the second group of people, I believe what they are focused on, they are focused on what can we do? What can we do to face this virus? This is a, if, if, I, if I'm going to use the terminology of some, the enemy of humanity, because it's not an enemy of a country, of an enemy of a faith, an enemy of a group of people. It is the enemy of the world right now, right? So this group of people, they are leaning on their faith to really find out what is our role to face this enemy. What can we do to prevent the harm? What can we do to make sure it does not spread? You see the difference? The first group is focused more on why and who, which is out of their role as a human being, and this is not their space. The second group is more focused on what can we do to prevent and to uh, 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 shield and to bring solution and to make sure that this doesn't spread and bring more harm to humanity and to themselves and to their communities. So these are the two groups of people that I believe, brothers and sisters, they are out there uh, in this dire time. And, 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 and I hope that we realize that the first group of people, it is they are out of their space. That space does not belong to them. That space, why, and the wisdom, and, uh, uh, and, 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 and what are the goals, all these things belong to the Creator. I rather that we focus on the second group of people that they are, what, what is our contribution? What is, what my faith guides me to do as I am facing this, uh, uh, this, this, this difficult virus as we all know and we keep on hearing about it almost every minute of the day. So these are the two things, brothers and sisters, that I wanted to start with. Now, Obviously, I, so I, I, I belong and I believe the second group is the group that Islam advocates. Islam wants us to be part of the solution. Islam wants us to contribute a, a defense line against that enemy that is really impacting humanity at large. So what so here now we go back to Islam, right? And there's an article that I hope all of you had the chance to read it, if not to read it. It was in Newsweek, I believe about a week ago. Um, and that article is talking about how the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, balanced between faith slash prayers and between reason. And the article talked about, which I will touch on, on, on some aspects of it. Um, the first thing is when we when we find and, and, and this is very important to really because when we talk about Sharia ah, we keep talking about Sharia ah, a certain aspect of the Sharia ah, and they are a, a great attempt to confine the Sharia ah to a specific 
capital punishment and when you know if if you if you steal your hand is cut and if you do this all, all these things that we all know about for example when here the the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam come and say that anadhafatu min al-iman aw kama qal that in the heart of your faith is cleanliness and there are so many hadith the prophet sallallahu would say that for you know you want your food to be blessed you wash your hands before and after you eat and there are plenty of other hadith what this makes it brothers and sisters that hygiene is not something to refine us as a human being but hygiene based on the saying of the prophet sallallahu is in the heart of faith so it is part of the sharia so when we are asked to uphold a good hygiene and to you know attend to the hygiene and i believe we, by now we all know what 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 that means washing your hands do all the right things we know that this is in the heart of the sharia it is not something that we do it just so we can you know look better or smell better no it is in the heart of the sharia i just wanted to make this point uh, clear the second thing is that when the prophet sallam says and it was narrated uh, by 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 Imam Ahmad wal Hakim wa Ibn Habban that Allah subhanahu ma anzal Allah azza wa jalla da illa anzal anzal lahu dawa alimahu man alimahu wa jahilahu man jahila that Allah did not has not made a disease without appointing a remedy for it and of course there is another version of the hadith that is talking about except of one which is old old age so again it is very clear and when we say the religion here it's very clear the religion is telling us that this virus called uh, coronavirus or covid 19 uh, it has a uh, antidote so this is the space i should invite our scientists i should invite our specialists to really contribute to find what the prophet ﷺ told us it has an antidote let's find it we, do, we don't have, as a, as a Muslim community, we don't have to wait until others find it. I think we should also, based on, 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 on this hadith, we should also try not to, we should, we should try to find it and, and vie with others in finding what can uh, help a humanity because our Prophet told us it is there. It is our responsibility to find it. So the third thing which I, I, I feel, I don't know why we, we, we are still not clear on this one. The verse in the Quran, which is, we hear it a lot, verse, chapter 2, verse 195, and I'm just, in Allah yuhibbul muhsinin, and let not your own hands throw you into harm or destruction, and preserve in doing good, behold, God loves the doers of good. It's very clear. So anytime there's a space, there's an event, there's an action that can bring you harm, you should avoid it. I mean, the simplest, the simplest is when we all know, and I think it's been written in our newsletter, and I'm sure we've heard it a lot by now, is the Prophet ﷺ said, no Juma because they had a storm. It was too cold. It wasn't that cold or that flu at that time. It's not going to go and kill like coronavirus is doing to people. Yet the Prophet ﷺ felt this is harm. And when we look at the Sharia, and you will find how brilliant our scholars were in defining what is harm. If you feel threatened psychologically, you don't go do the Jum'ah. And if, I mean, it is a, a long, long, long uh, uh, window or, or chapter in the uh, Fuqh, uh, Islamic Fuqh, when it comes to what is harm. The other hadith that Prophet Sallallahu that also we, were, we learned it since we were kids, la darara wa la dirar, that you do not, you have, to, you have to shield and protect yourself from any harm, nor that you should inflict harm on others. And I can go on and on. And, and now it is really per perplexing me when I hear that there are certain imams are insisting on holding the Jum'ah. We, we, the, the case in Indonesia, they had, they had a big Jum'ah and hundreds of people contacted the virus. 
in Malaysia, it's the same thing. I heard something in, in, in Canada, and honestly, I, it is it is really, um, I, I don't want to say, it is frustrating when 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 the the hadith and the verses are very clear and the history, it, it is very clear. Yet you will find certain people are insisting, no, I should hold the Jum'ah, uh, not realizing that harm, dar al mafasid muqaddam ala jalb al masalih. To prevent one from harm, it is more important and it is a priority over bringing goodness because harm is, you know, it has great impact. Uh, I'm not saying goodness does not, but the scholars were very clear minded that preventing uh, harm is priority. And brother and sister, I can go on and on. I mean, the famous story, we all know it by now and we should know it, we should know it by, by now is when uh, uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, took a delegation to Bilad al-Sham, to, to Damascus, to Syria, the large Syria. And he was received by a, one of the companions and he told him that there's a plague that really has uh, impacted the society in a significant way in Bilad al-Sham. And, and Sayyidina Umar, after consultation, he decided to retrieve. Why? Because uh, uh, he, he was reminded by a hadith of one of the companions that the Prophet, the Prophet ﷺ said, if there is a plague in an area, do not go into it. And if you happen to be in it, do not run out. Because this way you might be spreading the plague to others. Like the virus here, you, 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 are, you, you, you go to a city that coronavirus is there and you know it has impacted the society, don't go in. And if it happened that you were inside the city that what is impacted by coronavirus, don't leave because you have to be responsible. Laudar wala dirar means don't harm yourself, but also don't in, don't inflict harm on others. And here, one of the companions, which is uh, Abu Abayd ibn Jarrah, is a, is, a, is, a, is a big companion. When he told uh, that you are uh, running away from the will of God, so Umar looked at him and he told him, if anybody else would have told me, but not you, yes, I would. If, and he gave him an example, so, so, so for him to, to you know, make it clear, he said that, let's say we go, we arrive to a, a land, there are two spaces, one space is fertile and one, sta one space is barren. I take the fertile, أَفُرُّ مِنْ قَدَرِ اللَّهِ إِلَىٰ قَدَرِ اللَّهِ Allah willed, that there is a land to be barren and Allah will, there is a land to be fertile. I've chosen the one that is fertile. So this is the how Muslims understood and to stay away from what can bring harm and what can, can, can harm people. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم أدعو الله. الحمد لله. الحمد لله الذي كتب على نفسه الرحمة وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Dear brothers and sisters in the first khutbah I, I reviewed what our faith, what Islam advocates, admonishes, guides us to do as we face the coronavirus or plagues like it. And I think, I don't believe I've said anything that you don't know by now. And I, I really hope that you know it and you understand it and you are advocating it. Um, we all know by now this a famous quote, the social distance. It's common sense, right? And yet, I don't know, I still feel some people, they, 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 they don't, they, they're not getting it. When you read our history, you will find that when there's a plague like I talked about, and this plague, by the way, that hit uh, the, the, the Bilad al-Sham, the, the, the Sham area, Damascus, and all that, you know, back then, it's all the way Syria, Lebanon to Palestine. And when the plague hit that, that area, a lot of great companions have died. Great companions have died. 
So when we look at that brother and sisters, we find that when Amr ibn al-As was a leader of that area, what he said is he told people, spread, don't come together, and go into the mountain, go into an area where there's a lot of space. In other words, is disperse. Because when you're together, what's going to happen is you're going to pass on the disease. Again, common sense. Again, understanding that the, 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 the Islam, the religion of Islam is here to protect life and to repel harms and to help people to preserve their life. So, you know, we should do whatever we can to do so. Um, I think it was covered about a couple of weeks ago. Part of our approach, brothers and sisters, is patience. You know, by the time the antidote comes and by the time the economy gets back on its feet, there are so many challenges that are facing all of us. But as the Prophet ﷺ said, that the, the beauty about our faith, the beauty about the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that everything that we experience is good for us as long as we are patient. As long as we don't just say, why God? And what's the, what's the wisdom? And why it is us? And, and all these, why, why, why? All this frustration that usually emanate from the satanic whispers. We do what we have to do, as we said. We, 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 we do the hygiene and we do the, 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 the social distance. And then we'll try to find the solution. And we'll try to prevent the harm. But we have to be patient as well. Last but not least, brothers and sisters, really we all have been given more time to be alone, to be alone with your family, to be at home. And this is the time where I believe that we all should cease to reflect, to reflect on our relationship with everybody around us, but more importantly, our relationship with our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there is something that really, it, it, it's hard for me to, to swallow. There is a, those people who are up in arm complaining that the mosques have closed, the churches have closed, the synagogue have closed. In other words, is the door to God Almighty has closed. Who said that? For as far as we're concerned, we know that God is everywhere. God tells us, Inni qareeb, I am so close to you. I don't need to go to the mosque. Yes, the, the mosque has its place. And I want to go to, to, to the mosque. And I want to be with my brother and my sisters. And I want to be admonished. Because it is a place of purification, place of, of, of spirituality. Yes, but when that place is closed, what does that mean? God doesn't exist? Astaghfirullah. God is with you and he is close to you Then closer than your jugular vein. God is with us. He's so close to us. And the Prophet said that one of the blessings that Allah made all of earth when it is clean, a place of worship. So I can pray anywhere. I can connect to God anytime. And I can get closer to God all the time. I don't need now the mosque. Yes, inshallah, it will open. It's not easy to walk in into a place that I have been coming to for 40 years and I see it empty. This is, this is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is happening to all places of worship. We are patient. Remember, we talk about patience. We are patient, but we should not forget that God is here, is near. So I, this is the time where and why this is important, brothers and sisters, because it is a difficult time, economically, financially. Nobody is not experiencing this, health-wise. You are concerned, there's a fear, there's anxiety. All of these are very overwhelming, and we are human beings, we are weak. While on one hand, I know what I need to do, on the other hand, sometimes fear and anxiety can create a force that will hold me from doing the right thing. But when I am connected to God Almighty, and this is the time that we have to be connected, when I'm connected to God Almighty, this is the time where what, what he will do for you and I, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done for Moses. 
when, when he told him, go to Pharaoh and face the tyrant. And he told him, I am fearful of him. He said, don't worry, I am with you. He didn't tell him, well, you shouldn't be fearful. No, anxiety and fear, it's part of who we are. It was a part of Moses when he told God, inni akhaf. But when you are connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is the time that we are to be connected to him, this is where we can overcome our fear, overcome our anxiety, and we can be guided with that force, the spiritual force, our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to do what you heard and to guide us as we move forward to overcome the challenges. And inshallah, we will overcome virus and inshallah, humanity will overcome this challenge but on 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 one hand we should remember and be aware of what we talked about on the other hand this is the time for us to realize that how weak we are and this is the time to connect with our creator and strengthen our relationship hoping inshallah they can overcome vi this virus overcome the hardship and we will come stronger and better than before aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa lakum inni da'in fa qulu ameen let's pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts and our minds and to strengthen uh, to strengthen our faith we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us so we can connect with him that in the way that pleases him and we pray to god almighty to give us the strength and the wisdom and the energy in order for us to deal with this with the, with the challenges of today in this dire time. وآخر دعوة الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد أقم الصلاة.